Uh, my name is Daniel Hussar. I'm um, head of sales at FCOM, I think. There's one slide before that. Yes, this, this company. Uh, we provide a factoring platform and we are a very old fintech, 20 years old, so a bit of old world, a bit of new world. And um, today I will talk about AI, artificial intelligence, um, and how it can help with SME banking, but I take a very broad approach at this. So, so that we actually, uh, what we learned, and um, we don't have a finished product with this yet. So you can go with us uh, uh, to this journey and, and see, you know, get your own ideas also with this presentation. Um, and because, you know, AI is everywhere uh, as, as of now, Basically, you know, you have, maybe you have Siri, maybe you have Alexa, maybe you have Google Assistant. You saw these nice, you know, when, when you, this uh, text-to-speech um, translation of Google Assistant, where, when, it, when it kind of tries to understand you and you first panic because you said something completely different. I, I, I'm not sure if you, if you ever saw that. Um, and then out of the context of the words, like magically it appears in, in any language, what you just said and, and makes a Google search for you. Or when a um, Spotify playlist has been catered to your taste, for example, that's also AI at work. Um, but, and so the questions that I'm, that I'm asking, for example, the most important question is, will the robots take over? Um, no, really, will they? <laughs> I'm not sure um, if they will, but uh, by the end of this presentation, um, I think you'll be surprised about the paradigm shift that happened um, in AI in the last uh, 10, 20 years, in the last two decades, um, which I think is, is very exciting, like um, computers um, actually learning and, and building a brain inside a computer, um, for, for example. And I'm going to take you on a journey now, uh, way back to 1997, uh, which maybe some of you will remember um, this, this game uh, against, uh, that was IBM's Deep Blue. So not the guy, he's just part of the team. Uh, Deep Blue is an AI. And Gary Kasparov on the, on the left. And this was actually the year that uh, Kasparov uh, lost the first time, 1996 against this AI. And yeah, it's it's a very it was it was it was very hard uh, um, I, I guess also also for him to to lose um, against against the AI. It was the first time that at this complex game, and I and I, AI beat the grandmaster, the world champion of of chess at at that time. So um, the question is, how did they do this, and how is this different of what we do today with AI, like? Uh, Google Assistant, for example. So they, they used sheer processing power um, to, to basically overpower a human with his thinking because you know that, that really good chess players, not even grandmasters, they, they can think several turns ahead. Well, an AI uses the same method of decision trees, right? You, you kind of in the game of chess, you, you, you kind of look ahead and say, you know, what, what would be the most profitable move to, to kind of close the game and, and uh, analyzing win rates. Uh, the thing is an AI can analyze every possible move because, because Deep Blue could analyze uh, 200 moves a second, uh, 200 million moves a second, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, so, so, this, so it was able to make the best move always yeah, and with, with this. Um, considering every possible move, and as a plus, this team was allowed, uh, the, the IBM Deep Blue team, was allowed between matches to kind of reconfigure and reparameterize the AI. Um, um, so, which is, which kind of, I mean, it's, it's a bit unfair, and, and we will see some similarities with, with financial products that we, that we are using with parameterization by, by humans. Um, so, what the gist of this is is this is, was an extremely good you know extremely good AI and a great accomplishment at, at that time. But was the AI really learning? It was it was a combination of processing power and, and very smart people um, um, doing this and and the brute force of this AI going through every possible calculation. But um, today things look a little bit different with with the AI. Let's say. Um, doesn't change. 2016, 
March 2016. Um, this was the Challenger game uh, Go. It's, it's not so well known, so I will just explain very briefly the, the basics. So um, the goal is to have more stones on the board than your opponent by the end of all, by, by the end of the game. And if you can encircle um, your opponent's stones um, with, with your own, then these stones get removed. So they get trapped. They get kind of trapped. So this is basically, this is a very old game. This is um, 2,500 years old. And the challenge of this game is this, this has been deemed as impossible by data scientists is that, well, it has, um, always has 10 to the power of 172 moves, which is more than atoms in the universe. Um, these are the possible moves at any given time. So this game cannot be solved by brute force. The computer, no computer can go all possible iterations of this. Um, maybe ever, maybe quantum computing, I don't, I don't know. But, um, so there had to be a different approach, right, to do this. Um, and this was f found with a, with a company um, called Deep, DeepMind, uh, which were acquired uh, by Google at that time, and they created an, an, an AI called AlphaGo, um, and which played this guy. Lee Sedol, the, um, uh, from South Korea, he is 18-time world champion at the game Go. So he is a bona fide genius uh, at, at this game, abs absolutely, and, and was deemed unbeatable. And he was very confident um, that he would beat um, the AI 5-0. And then he lost the first game, uh, which, was, yeah, which was deemed kind of a fluke. And he lost the second game. And he lost the third game. Um, um, he won the fourth game. And he lost the fifth game. So, so he lost four to one against this AI. And the, the funny thing is, or, or the, the thing that he remarked after this is that, that it was, he was absolutely impressed that it was like behaving like a human and it was creative. And he made, it made the AI made like bad moves, uh, let, let's say, a moves that the human would never make, but were still creative and, and led to a win that, that one out of 10,000 skilled players would never have made, maybe an amateur, and, and everybody would have thought it is a mistake. And he said, okay, how, it's, it's not important how, why I lost all these games now, uh, yeah, but how did I win this one game? And it was because, and you could see it, there's a documentary on Netflix if you're, if you're interested, you could see that um, the AI taught him new things about this game that he mastered, that he's, he's a complete master at this game, about this 2,500-year-old game. Um, yeah, he, um, yeah. And, and after that, he didn't lose one match for, I think, three months or something like that in tournaments because he applied this new knowledge and probably overpowered and confused his, his opponents uh, completely. Yeah, and so how did they did, do this? Um, they used a technique which is because it can't be, remember, it can't be solved by brute force, so we can't go through all the calculations, so we need to do something different. And we need to take, they took an approach, it's called um, um, machine learning and deep, deep learning. And why deep learning? Because, well, it's, um, I'm going to briefly summarize because it's, it's quite a, a complicated subject, but um, it's many layers of um, so-called neurons. And um, they, they kind of generate um, inputs and outputs. So um, this AI analyzes games. Yeah, it, it really plays the games and analyzes them. It analyzes moves. This is the bottom layer, for example, one move, another move. Then on a layer, it has a certain board state. You saw the black and white stones, so it will look at part of the board and try to say, is this a good board state? Is it a bad board state? Just like math questions, you know, is this good? Is this bad? Is this right? Is this wrong? And then it will play games against or will analyze games of first of maybe amateur players just to imitate these moves and to imitate these board states. And then it will, will go further and, and uh, be shown data of better players and will it play against itself all over and over and over again and learn just like a human brain um, yeah so, so so this is much more similar to a human brain and, and even though it also uses for example decision trees but it cannot go through every branch uh, um, to to analyze what a good play is so um, 
it, just like us, when we go through decisions, we don't take every decision into account. It would be it would be crazy, you know. I could jump off that building. That's not a decision tree that's in my mind, right right now. Yeah, but I um, there are there are a limited amount of options, and and so an AI can learn through deep learning what the best limited options are, and then pick the best one from this reduced set of of possibilities. Um, let's say, so yeah, that's a brain. So the thing is, I talked about a paradigm change and it's about developing. Now we are, we humans, we tell the, the computer through, through code what to do and maybe what not to do. But this is kind of, and, and this is an approach called training. When you show these games over and over again and let it play against itself, it kind of writes itself. And this is not um, I don't know, this is not futuristic, this is not some you know, far away thing. This happened in March 2016. So this is, this is all over. This is, this is happening right now and, and, and there are lots of companies that have code that writes itself and, and makes itself better, improves itself um, um, over and over again. Um, and maybe to, to finish the story, um, there's now a new AI, which is the new Go, Go World Champion, which is called Alpha Zero, and it only, and it, and it won 100 and, uh, to zero games against the against the AI that beat Lee Sedol, the the Korean world champion. So this is just the, the improvement is 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 crazy. Uh, um, just just in a couple of months, um, yeah, by playing against itself. So let's jump to now. And now I'm going to I'm actually going to talk of one of our products that we that we uh, use right now. It's a risk module. So I mentioned we do factoring. So this is about invoices, financing invoices and putting them in your inventory. And we, with this risk module, we can actually, because we have a very deep uh, um, um, yeah, data depth, uh, we can actually tell if this invoice is fake or not. Yeah, we, we use uh, lots of parameterization uh, to, to do this, um, like uh, looking for patterns. Yeah, if you make up invoices, uh, for example, you, you uh, yeah, try to defraud a bank, for example, the, the uh, numbers and the amounts, they, they won't be um, so, uh, so streamlined. They won't align to a bell curve or maybe you have a preference for the number two or, or something like that. Uh, um, maybe the invoice was posted on a weekend yeah, and, and the numbers don't, don't match up. And we can also compare uh, um, the, the, the client's behavior from today to, uh, and compare it to his behavior from 180, day, 180 days ago or, or 30 to 180 days. So we can look for patterns. But uh, the thing is, um, with these, you know, we put in all this big data and, and we have annually 100 million invoices going through, going through this process uh, alone. Um, the thing is, this is still the Kasparov approach, if you think about it. This is, this is great and it's, it's working really well. Uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this is super, but it's still this. We have, this is based on human experience. These parameters are, are, are based on human experience and they are um, set by, by humans. So th there are t uh, probably patterns that we are missing. And if we would build a brain if we would try to build a brain that can find new patterns and new parameters in, in our data, just the way AlphaGo did, and teach us new things about the risk game, wouldn't that be amazing? I think so. Yeah, AI risk monitoring. So we have a feasibility study uh, coming out and see you know, how this can work, um, if, if this will work at all. So yeah, we have a solid product yet, but, but yeah. So, and... Uh, we, we talk about a lot, lot about uh, user experience, for example, in, in, in fintechs, and, and w which is great. But um, I think you need both. You need a good front end and a great user customer journey and a good back end to handle all the stuff that is coming at you from, from your great marketing and from your great, great platform. And people not defrauding you yeah, through factoring because maybe they figure out the parameterization and they figure out the loopholes on your thresholds and then they only give you invoices below 10,000 euro. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, with, with this, the AI can learn to adapt to that and, and, and catch these guys potentially. Yeah. Uh, so, and then you can scale because you can automate this risk process because we all know, I mean, this is very costly to, to kind of monitor these, the, the, smaller, the smaller tickets, the smaller clients. 
Yeah. Well, and now decide for yourself if the robots are going to take over. Um, yeah, and that's the end. And I have 15 seconds, 14, 30. Thank you.